All right, y'all. So just been doing a lot of, you know, a lot of. I'm always doing my studying and my research, and so it, 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 in keeping with my studying and my research, I just want to share some stuff with you guys. I think, right? This is again my opinion, my my conclusions that I've arrived to. I think the greatest achievement any human being could make is self discovery. Uh, Malcolm X is somebody who I'm very. Uh, I hold in high esteem, right? I read his autobiography, was an example of that. And, and there's many others, but I'm just using him because the first person come to mind, right? Self-discovery. When, when, when Malcolm X went into jail, his name was uh, Malcolm Little. And his nickname was Detroit Red, because I read his autobiography by Alex Haley when I was in high school, so I read that eons ago. But I still remember that that much. His name was Detroit Red. He was a pimp, drug dealer, you know, you name it, robber, whatever. And when he went, yeah, he was born Malcolm Little, street name was Detroit Red. And we all know his story. That right there is an example of self-discovery. The greatest achievement I believe that we, including myself and all of us, can make is self-discovery. And self-discovery comes through true self-awareness. Your true self-awareness uh, will allow you to 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 have self dis, to to discover yourself. True self discovery, true self awareness leads to true self discovery, which leads to self actualization and self realization. Right? Self actualization, self awareness, true self awareness. And if if and and when I say true self awareness, true self awareness, the reason why I think it's the greatest achievement, I don't care how many how many your value and who you are uh, is not, it's not tied into how many buildings you put your name on, right? Your, your, your discovery of yourself, your self, self awareness, your true self awareness is greater than any buildings or edifice you can put your name on as far as the legacy is concerned, right? Uh, your self-awareness, your true self-awareness is greater than any amount of zeros you can ac accumulate in your bank account, right? And the reason why I said it is this, your true self-awareness will allow you to understand that who you are at core is not human. You're not a human. See, I'm going somewhere. You're, we are not humans. And this is why true self-awareness and true self-discovery is so difficult. Because ingrained and wired into our thinking is that we are a homo sapiens sapien, a human being uh, that belongs to the animal kingdom. That is what evolution has taught, Darwinism has taught. That is what bio biology, but bi you know, pretty much has has taught us. It's ingrained. We're human beings. We belong to the uh, of the five kingdoms of life. We belong to the uh, animal kingdom. Uh, we're homo sapiens sapiens mammals. So this is why buried, buried in all those facts, because those are facts, or are they? But, the, but for argument's sake, those are the standard European, Euro educational institutions that we have, you know, attended and accumulate this information and that have been fashioned, accustomed, and conditioned to believe. We're humans, we belong to the animal kingdom, homo sapiens sapiens, and that is a fact. And again, is it, a, is it a fact? But scientifically, it is a fact. It's proven. But when you come into self-discovery, true self-awareness, true self-awareness lets you know that is not so. That is not so. True self-awareness lets you know that those facts... Those standards that has been etched and sketched and ingrained into our subconscious thinking that governs how we interact, those facts are as true as up to a certain point. And that point, those facts are true up to certain limited fact, up to certain limited points. And those limited points is that they are facts in terms of our existing 
on a physical plane, a physical realm. They are true in terms of how we have to interact with matter and mass. So in those, in those, in that context, in those confines, those facts hold water. But if you can dig beneath the surface. There's a word called esoteric. Esoteric means inner meaning, deeper meaning, inner, beyond meaning, secret meaning, esoteric. Then there's exoteric. Exo is outside. So the words that you see, the symbols, the images, the imagery, these facts, scientific facts, all that we can see is exoteric knowledge. Those that, that knowledge is conveyed to us, teaches us, and we operate based off that knowledge. Exoteric knowledge. But esoteric, E-S-O-C-E-T-R-I-C, E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C, excuse me, E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C, esoteric. The meaning beyond the exoteric, right? The meaning beyond the exoteric, that which we can, you know, that, that, that surfaced information that we can see, the words, the letters, right? When you do the esoteric, and there's another Greek word which is exo, ex, uh, exegetical or exegesis, which is the correct interpretation, correct way of, 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 of extrapolating information, exo, ex, uh, exegesis. And then you have eisegesis, which is, the, which is the incorrect extrapolation. I'm getting fancy with the words here. Bear with me. I, mean, I, I love it. You know, I am kind of a, a wordsmith myself. I, I, I love words. But I don't want to get, I don't want to lose the, the point in that. I don't want to twist y'all up with that. The, the point is this. When you do the esoteric extrapolation, pulling out deeper meanings, you and I are not mere humans. What we are, we are expressions. We are the, the, the expression of God divine's energy. All of us, without exception, what you are is an expression on a physical plane being expressed or being manifested in a physical form, the body, in order to function and operate with mass and matter, which is what the realm is made of. We could not, there is no other way for us to operate in this realm except with a physical body to interact with physical mass. Physical mass must interact with physical mass. So the esoteric meaning or the, 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 the hidden knowledge behind the knowledge is that you and I are div divine energy. We're divine energy that is manifest and operating we are the expression of god operating in a physical realm when you really let this sink in you understand exodus chapter 7 verse 1 i'm gonna give you context god tells moses go to pharaoh and tell him to, to let my people go moses says this how can i go and tell pharaoh to let your people go when i can't even tell the same people, they won't even listen to me. The very people you're telling me to go to Pharaoh and, and tell to let go of, they themselves won't listen to me. The children of Israel, when I talk to them, they blow me off. Oh, whatever, Moses. And they go about, they, they don't take me serious. How can this uncircumcised, you know, individual go and speak to the king, the ruler, the today's president, and tell him what to do? This is what Moses said to God. I'm giving you context. When God told Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses says, I, uh, he said, I, this uncircumcised, I'm uncircumcised. In other words, what he was saying is I'm not qualified. I'm not of that upper echelon. I'm not an aristocrat. I'm not an oligarch. I'm not of a ruling class. I'm subservient to, to Pharaoh. I'm a, a, a subject, a peasant, a nobody. And Exodus, that's context. Chapter 7, verse 1 says this. I just gave you context. I gave you a, back, a backdrop to what's to come. God says to Moses, I have made you a God to 
Pharaoh. I have made you a God to Pharaoh. Go read it for yourself. Not taken out of context or anything. This is in line with scripture. This is called the correct interpretation, the eisegesis. The exegesis, excuse me, exegetical interpretation, correct interpretation of scripture. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, he says, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. There's other scriptures to back that scripture up in Corinthians. He says, no, he says, I will be their God. I will dwell in them. Dwell means to reside, to live. I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and they will be my people and I will be their God. Another scripture says, know you not, know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy and living God. God lives in me. He lives in all of us. So if God lives in us, if God is telling Moses, look, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. What is it? Who is your Pharaoh? What is your Pharaoh that you're not speaking to? Because Pharaoh met metaphysically, literally and metaphysically just simply means a challenge that God is telling you to go and fix in your life. A problem, a mountain, a condition, a circumstance, a situation. Go and speak to it. But yet we all stutter because Moses stuttered, both metaphorically and literally. We are hesitant. We are reluctant. We see ourselves as Moses saw himself. Who, me? How can I go? They're the... The upper echelon, the higher class. I'm a low class. I'm second class. I can't go and speak to them. But God said, I've made you a God to Pharaoh. And that is your true self, folks, right there in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. That is your true self-discovery. I have. This is hard for a lot of people to grasp because we've been pro programmed so adamantly and so concrete in such a concrete way to not to not think like that at all it's kind of blasphemed and it's taboo to think that to say i am a god over my conditions i am a god to my circumstances i am a god to this alcohol bottle who's trying to keep me hooked on it i am a god to crack that's trying to keep me hooked on it i am a god over prostitution i am a god over this, this this foreclosure. I am a God over this economic downturn. I am a God over this recession. I am a God over foreclosure. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what God told Moses to say, or not to say, he told Moses, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. I have made you a God to Pharaoh. What does that mean? What I'm trying to tell us. God consciousness is in us. God's energy is in us. It's about Tapping into the source code, decoding, deciphering, and activating. We got to know how to, we got to learn how to unlock and activate God's power and let it flow and manifest and speak to the Pharaohs in each individual lives. Pharaoh, your Pharaoh is whoever or whatever. That's blocking, hindering, and binding you. Pharaoh was binding the children of Israel, holding them in bondage. So whatever got you in bondage, that's your Pharaoh. Now go and speak to it. Peace.